These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the New England Patriots and the Buffalo Bills. And we are underway in Buffalo. Taken in the end zone. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Snap to Allen. Escaping the pressure right. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open. Now second down. Got out of the pocket. Didn't look like he had anybody open, Charles. So just gets rid of it. And a good play by him. If no one's open and you don't have a running lane that you want to take, make the right choice. Get rid of it. Live to fight another down. Will try again on second down. Eluding the pressure right. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. You ain't doing nothing to play. Let's go, let's go. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And he's able to find Diggs. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Allen to Diggs there for a Buffalo first. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Now Allen again. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. An early message that this secondary is going to be tested because even though it fell incomplete, it almost felt like a warning shot to get things going. A second and ten on a chilly, snowy December day. And I must say, I'm loving it. Kind of putting me in the holiday spirit. Charles, Charles hates it. He's giving me the evil eye, folks. Cole Beasley, the intended target, and it's third down. And he's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. An incomplete pass on second down. It muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Allen. The pass complete to Hakeem Butler. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. And one. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. Singletary, they'll run for it. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. He needed a yard. He didn't get anything. And this defense delivers a turnover on downs on the very first drive of the afternoon. 
Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 42. They'll start out here with the option left. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. No gain on the play. Second and ten at the 47-yard line. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. Looking middle, and that's complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. Yeah, it was a good start getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. Give them three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play. It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that field. I'm like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. On second down now, it's Carson. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. That's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. with Carson and they've got it inside the 10 at the 8 that gain of 15 gets him on the doorstep first and goal well there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run and let's face it it shouldn't be a surprise he's one of the better backs in the league had to come into this game with the idea slow him down otherwise it's going to be a long afternoon They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Touchdown. Chris Carson with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Pats have taken the early lead. The losing streak had taken on a life of its own, and I think it infiltrates a team when you're on that much of a slide. But this group has managed to focus, come out early, and put a touchdown on the board. They look, they look like they mean business in this one. They do now the key, holding on to that attitude, because, man, that streak has been a struggle for them. Extra point through the snowflakes, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Now this will make it into the end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. 25 yard line. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down, caused all of that. it caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain, so now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled that one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards Ready? 
They'll run out of the gun with Singletary. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 11 more on that one and another first down. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. And sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he, he gets lost in there and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history. The Pats are going to get there. Down he goes. Everson Griffin on the sack. Taken to the fourth round back in 2010. What a steal. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He's trying to do everything that he'd been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique, except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. Allen's throw is complete, and he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Patriots' 28. A gain there of 21 yards. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Flushed out right. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Stephon Diggs with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Bills are an extra point away from tying the football game. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. It's the game at seven. Tyler Bass to kick off for Buffalo. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Five yard line. The Patriots take over first and ten at their own 25-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Tackle by A.J. Epinesa. Second and six, just inside the 30. From the gun, it's Hurts. Man open, that's Robert Foster complete. And finally, he is out of bounds, but not before taking it down near the 15. A big play there on the catch and run. 55 yards. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. This is Carson. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They'll run here with Freeman. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. No gain on the They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Hurts is going to try and run, and they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. Look at the nine-yard line. to his right and he's going to be taken down sacked back around the 18 yard line and that's the kind of stand all defenses are seeking third and goal backs against the wall and they get a monster sack and now they're going to force him into a field goal for them that's a win now Jason Sanders for the field goal try from the right hash it's a 35 yard attempt Thank <laughs> you. 
Sanders kick is good and the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead so the drive stalls out inside the 15 yard line but they do get three and I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks that no one says to their guy hey that's just like making an extra point piece of cake because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance just give him confidence and let him knock it through at their own 23 yard line The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the pass. Easier said than done, though. Way easier said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Well, when you've got a tight end who can run, you've got to give him a shot to unlock the defense. Want to see what they can get. Taking the big shot downfield. That one winds up incomplete. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. From the gun, it's Allen. Isaiah McKenzie hauling it in. And he is going to have a Bills first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. His first catch, and it's a pretty big one. They get the conversion on third down. I will remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. There's a throw over the middle. It's taken in by his tight end. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Back-to-back -back nice gains. That one for 14 yards and another first. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. Allen now on first down. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. To throw again, Allen. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. And that's one of those plays where it's hard to keep two eyes on the football when you know the contact's coming, let alone getting two hands around it, hugging it to your body, and absorbing the hit, even for those big tight ends who you would think could absorb that contact. Escaping the pressure right. It's Knox, the tight end, making the catch. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. Allen and Knox teaming up there for Buffalo first down. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. And incomplete, he dropped it in the end zone. In the end zone. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this case, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. 53, 53, Mike, Mike. Back to the air on second down. It's Allen. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. It's Desmond Trufant. And a very good return as he'll take it all the way up to the 40-yard line. Well, he had a little bit of the turnover bug last week. Three interceptions. Not an absolute disaster, but another one here. Do you start to get a little worried? You worry about your team as a whole because you have to find a way to make those interceptions quote-unquote go away. And that means your defense. They've got to go out there on sudden change and at least hold people to field goals. And if that keeps happening, they lose confidence in the quarterback and then no one plays well. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. On the option, it will be Hurts. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. 
Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. Throwing his hurts. And he's got his man in stride, complete. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. The Patriots send out their punter as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Returnable here from the 38. A uh, very good return that time. 18 yards. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. He's got the hook up with Diggs. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? So instead of trailing into the lockers, they grab the lead with the clock reading all zeros before intermission. I would love to go into the locker room with them because right now they're riding a nice wave, aren't they? They're feeling good about themselves. But I know the coach you're going to be talking to about calming down, taking it easy. We've got a whole second half. But use the way we finished the first one to start the second. All right, coach. Thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Not too many breaks ahead, according to the radar. More snow on the horizon as we are back underway in half number two. Taking in at the three. Now a hit and a loose football. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And this is going to be brought back for the Bills touchdown. Some problems here on special teams, and it results in the scoop and the score. They talk all the time on special teams about keeping your head on a swivel, trying to see the whole field. Hard to do when things are going that fast. Bodies all over the place. You're just trying to find the right guy to align yourself with. On that play, wow. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Fielded just outside the goal line. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Take over first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. They'll look to make some inroads here, trailing 21 to 10 as they come up on a first and 10. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback. They also have to have interest in the running game as well. They did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. And he will have a Patriots first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. There's a quick throw right side, and it's complete. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Complete to number 16. Four yards on the pickup. Second and six at the 43-yard line. Here's Hurts to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Freeman. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll be third down.
Hurt sets up to throw it. He's going to float this over the middle, deep. And the throw there going to be incomplete. So one first down on that drive, and that's it. Forced to take the deep shot on third down and couldn't hit it. Now they have to punt this one away. The Patriots send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. Three yards on the punt, return of four, and the Bills will take over the football with a first and ten. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. How about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. First and 10 at the 41-yard line. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now a run with Singletary. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they are playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Eluding the pressure right. And boy, that one drops incomplete. But if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. That was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. And he completes it to the tight end, Knox. And the ball is knocked out, and it's picked up by the Patriots. And what a return as he brings this one all the way back to the 25-yard line. Playing in snow brings so many other factors into the game. It's not just trying to take care of the ball, and we just saw there that that's difficult to do, but just trying to keep your feet and carry out your assignments and, and make sure you're comfortable while you're out there playing. Are you warm enough in your clothing? There's a million things going on, but the biggest one, hold on to the ball. On first and ten, it's Hurts. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. That catch good for only a couple. Brandon, you know this is going to be discussed because this is the fear of all the backs when they run this type of a route. They've got to find the football, and sometimes they don't see the defender. And in this case, he took a pretty good shot for his efforts, but give him credit, able to hold on to the football. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Hurts pass. Call it a gain of three. And that's going to lead to a third down. Three-yard pickup. And it's third down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he will have a Patriots first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. His throw incomplete. Hurts. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On second down, it's Carson. 
And power running here down to the six-yard line. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. They go play action with Hertz. Sliding out of the under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. A loss of two yards. And it's fourth down. Jason Sander is on for the field. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Score Bills 21, Patriots 10. And he pulled it. Oh, my goodness. It's no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. And that one, just an absolute killer. A chance to get this back within one score. All hope not gone yet. But at the same time, you're exactly right. They needed to get back within one score and have a motivated defense take the field in order to get it back for them for one last big drive. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. The big gainer there on the catch and run, 37 yards. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Dawson Knox, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Bills will extend their lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Bass on for the extra point. And oh, it's no good on the PAT. So they can't add on here. And our score is going to stay right where it is. Tyler Bass to kick off four points. So with the missed PAT in his rearview mirror, he goes back out to kick this one off. Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20 to the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. It's now appearing that this losing streak is going to continue. You know, the coaching staff was confident that this was going to be the game to stem the tide, but that just has not been the case. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Open man here is Foster. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. New England on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. Off the play fake. Here's Hurts. And he's going to have the connection to Foster. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Three plays and out. It's fourth down. They're going on fourth down with Hurts. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And unable to break away, they stop him a few yards shy. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Bills are going to take over in excellent field position. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Working out of the shotgun, here's Allen. Flushed out right, and now he's going to use his legs. The escapability in evidence there is that one good for 15 and a first. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. Flush to his right. And this is caught for a Bills touchdown. Stephon Diggs with his 
his third touchdown and 18th on the year. And the Bills will add on to their lead. They were still throwing with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? And the decision to come out of the end zone is going to cost him five yards as he's taken down right at the 20. At their own 20-yard line. The Pats at the line, ready to go. On first down, Hurts. He'll drop this one down to Freeman. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. The dump off good for eight there on first down. On second down, Freeman. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. A gain of 11 on the play. Play action. Here's Hurts. Rolling to his right. He's going to take off with it. He's got a first. And I think the ball's out. But this will get out of bounds, so possession will stay the same. Able to make something out of nothing there. 17 yards and a first down. Retains possession. Throwing from the gun. It's Hurts. Shifts by him. Call it no game there on the first down play. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He can make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. From the gun, it's Hurts. And he fires one that's intercepted. Isaac Yinem in there to pick it. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. They're down here in the fourth, and that personal foul penalty's not going to help. No, in these types of situations, players will tell you that's extra intensity. From where we sit, it's actually frustration. Not a good play. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off around the 27. And a great return here gets this one all the way down to the 26-yard line. And we are inside of two minutes left in this lopsided affair. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. He's going to let it go deep for the end zone. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. For this defense, CD, that's kind of the icing on the cake here as we get to the end of this one. And didn't you feel that they weren't just going into total prevent there? You know, they had the lead, and sometimes you fall back and you lose your aggressiveness. Not in this case. They were still making a play on the football, and look how that one turned out. They may have salted this one away. Now a deep ball going to be caught here near midfield. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. That one goes for 30 yards. Boy, another big play late here for an offense, Charles. It certainly has had its fair share of big plays. Coverage has been a problem all game long. And I would say that going along with that has been confidence. Because even if they had the right coverage, they've still dented them. And now it's been a real issue for them during this game. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. They are certainly not letting up on the pressure in this one. And oftentimes you hear this expression, all gas, no break from defenses. But in this case, is the offense still throwing the football up big in the fourth quarter. From midfield, here's Allen. Escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let this go deep. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And they will finally catch him, but not before he reaches the 8-yard line. So a critical mistake, roughing the passer. Now it's first and goal. And Allen 
is actually going to throw it here. And give him another six. It's caught for a touchdown. And the blowout continues. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that. So he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Taken about seven yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. That catch, good for only a couple. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. On second down now, it's Freeman. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. And no move to get the offense off the field. Despite failing once, they're going to go again here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. It's complete. Swings it out to his running back. But he will not get away. He stops short of the marker. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And boy, possession here turns over with a football already being in the red zone. And Allen going to be intercepted for the third time. It's Kyler Duggar who picks it. And he will bring it out past the 20-yard line. So now he's equaled his interception total from a week ago. Remember, Charles, he had three last week. And you know all week long he vowed to take that number down. Told the guys on the team, don't worry, things are going to pick up. I've got this. But he is in a major league rut right now. Let's see if his teammates can pick him up along the way. You're right. He talked about being cool, calm, collective, rebounding. Not rebounding right here. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Hurts. And the Bills are going to get him as he goes down. I think normally we would talk about this more with basketball players and football players, but let's adopt it in this case. He's a stat sheet stuffer. Had the interception earlier, now a sack. But he just needs a touchdown for the trifecta. That's about all he needs, and he's going to go for it. He's going to let it fly. And got his man complete. And a little bit of a consolation prize there. He's into the end zone. Won't win him the game, but they do get the score with all zeros showing. But some fantasy players are really happy with that score. Doesn't affect the outcome, but hey, nice job there to put it in the end zone for the final play. Could it affect other things? Sometimes the, these types of scores are ones that we don't consider big at the time. Then later on, we find out maybe that was a tiebreaker. Yeah. Or, of course, in the fantasy football world, these points mean a lot. <laughs> a lot there. So the Patriot offense stays out there, and they'll line up and go for two. They'll try and run with Freeman. And he'll take this for a short gain on what will prove to be the final play of this ball game. 
Hey, so they tried to tack on two more. Wouldn't have mattered as far as who won and who lost, but that's how this one ends. Felt like cosmetics, didn't it? Just put another two points on the board, make the score look a little bit better. Maybe they wanted to run a two-point conversion just to see what they had. Who knows? But it just wasn't necessary. So for Buffalo, it's a very important win as they move to 9-4 and four now on the year. And they'll get to stay put for a few days as they'll host the Baltimore Ravens next week. Meanwhile, for the Patriots, they're squarely in play for next year mode now as they drop to 2-11. and 11. And they will be at home next week to take on the Miami Dolphins. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.